Hey everyone, my name is Tyler Johnson and uh, I'm here to talk to you about um, some medicine ball training. So we're going to talk about how you can gain 10 yards off the tee um, with using a medicine ball and how we can incorporate it into your training. Um, just kind of move forward here a little bit about myself. My name is Tyler Johnson. Um, I'm a golf performance coach at Par for Success. I primarily oversee um, the junior program, however, my background is very heavy in college strength and conditioning. Um, I did just recently um, jump over to uh, Par for Success. I moved to Raleigh almost exactly one year ago, uh, March 2019. But prior to that, I was an assistant strength and conditioning coach at Georgia Southern University, where I was primarily training the Olympic sports teams. Um, but before that or prior to that, I completed my bachelor's degree at North Dakota State University and I completed my master's at Georgia Southern where um, prior to even that yet I did multiple um, internship experiences at, at different Olympics uh, strength and conditioning programs around the nation. So moving forward, uh, I just kind of want to talk about um, the energy system development, especially within the golf swing. Just uh, just kind of educate everybody a little bit on what exactly is happening while you do the golf or while you um, swing a club, especially that single bout. So during golf swing, the body's using the ATP, PC, or the creatine phosphate system to produce energy. Um, this is your fast twitch. Uh, this is what fuels your fast twitch, actually. Uh, it uses muscles or uses stored energy. So um, there really isn't – people talk about um, endurance athletes doing – carb loading yeah n none of that really has anything to do with this energy system um the the energy that it provides lasts for up to 12 seconds and the recovery time for this energy system is anywhere from two to three minutes so think about when you do hit that initial t or when you do hit that swing off the initial t how long it takes you to get from um that first initial swing to the second that that's definitely um, falling within these parameters. Obviously, we'll talk about um, how long a, a swing actually takes and then just think about if, if you're walking or even if you're riding, the time that it takes to recover from one hit to the next. So um, how does this transfer to golf? I kind of just talked about it on the previous slide. However, th this energy system does last for up to 12 seconds of work. Um, and thinking about how that correlates to golf, so what I found was an average swing time for an amateur golfer is anywhere from one to about one and a half seconds long. So that definitely falls within this this energy system. Like what what type of work are we producing in the time frame for this energy system? Definitely falls within there. So um, we can, we can definitely cross off that block. So check mark right there. Moving on though, um, what exactly is happening? This is all this is power movement. So nothing that that you're doing for that short amount of time, one to one and a half seconds, is going to be anything less than that. So it's a power movement. You're thinking as fast and, and as forceful as possible. So what exactly is the equation for power? So power is work divided by an elapsed time, or that actually um, converts out to be power is, is force times velocity. And well, that's going to be kind of a, a key that we're going to keep following along here that's going to drive the rest of this presentation is that power equals force times velocity equation. So now that we know we're using the ATP creatine phosphate system and we know that we're um, producing power with the swing, um, now I kind of want to talk to you about how training is driven exactly to fit this. So here's a force velocity graph. If you're a strength coach, you know this like the back of your hand. Um, what, what is portraying here is on the y-axis, that's the amount of force that you, you produce in, in an effort. And on the x-axis, that's the amount of velocity. So thinking about um, the different movements that you do in the weight room. So if you think about um, a heavy, heavy, heavy back squat, like you, you're testing out on um, back squats, that's going to fall a lot closer to that maximal strength, to that the, the further left side of this graph, because you're creating a, a ton of force. Say you're maxing out on a squat with 200 pounds, you're creating a ton of force, however, you're not going to be moving very quick. Um, however, we're... we're um, um, to the opposite end of that or on the other side of the spectrum of that would be if you're doing a, a, a 20 yard sprint okay you're it's it's very very fast and there's not a ton of force involved there's not much resistance involved there so what we're doing is we're trying to find right about that that middle okay right around that power area um because power is both forceful and it is fast it's strong and fast so how do we do that? We do that by training with medicine balls because medicine balls, one, 
they, you can overload them enough to create that strength or create that force. And two, you can overload them um, just enough so that way you can still keep that speed of the movement or the velocity up. So um, what this all depends on or, or what training with medicine all de um, becomes dependent on is the acceleration. So how fast you can move that ball from zero to 60 and then the technique, which is ultimately comes down to your strength. And we're going to talk about both of these two points or both these two things that we're dependent on in the next couple slides. So how does it relate to golf? So we talked about acceleration and technique. Well, I like to break that down now. And we know that if you're th just think right now about the most recent medicine ball exercise that you've completed, whether it be a squared scoop toss, um, an Ironman throw, a transverse slam, think about those two things. Acceleration, so you're, you're starting from a standstill. For example, a, a squared scoop toss, you're starting with that ball loaded up on your hip and you're trying to get it to move from zero right on your hip to as fast as possible where it explodes against the wall. Okay. What What's primarily driving that is going to be your central nervous system. And we'll talk about that. Okay. And then think about your technique. So you hear Alex, Jordan, or myself telling you different coaching cues, like keep your hips back, rotate your shoulders, turn through the hips. That's going to ultimately come down to your strength. Your strength is going to control the technique. And we're going to break those two um, into kind of two separate categories. And we're going to talk about them a little bit more specifically coming up here. So a neuromuscular adaptation, if we go back to the previous slide, connecting your strength to your central nervous system is what's called a neuromuscular adaptation. So remember that your power equation, force times velocity equals power. And remember, we talked about force is going to come from your strength and velocity is ultimately going to be driven by your central nervous system. And that's exactly what I have in these next two points following that is think about the movements that you do to gain strength. Hey, we do heavy squats, heavy bench, heavy deadlift, do different exercises like single leg RDLs, um, single arm dumbbell rows, um, different pulling, K-box, K-pulley, single arm pulls, rotations, different stuff like that. What we're doing there is we're trying to gain the appropriate amount of strength so that way we can take that strength and convert it into power. And that's exactly what the central nervous system's role is. What the central nervous system does, it goes, all right, we've got all this strength. Now, how do we make that strength work really, really, really fast? And that's where the velocity of the movement comes. And that's what's called rate coding is think about your central nervous system is what sends signals down to um, your muscular system. And it's telling your muscles in throughout all your, your the areas of the body involved in a medicine ball throw. It's telling move fast, move fast, move fast, move faster. So think about when we when Alex and I keep telling you like these have to be as fast as possible. What we're basically trying to do is increase the rate coding going on in your nervous system. Thinking about like a really good analogy that I like to tell my juniors is think about you just made your nervous system chug a cup of coffee and it's telling, it's sending signals at a faster, faster, faster rate to try and get that strength to convert over into power. And that's exactly what medicine ball training is doing is taking that strength that you've gained from your heavy lift, squat, bench, and deadlift. And it's training your nervous system to fire faster and even faster and even faster to create that neuromuscular adaptation, which ultimately is what we're chasing with training with a med ball. So how does all this relate to golf? So you can throw a med ball really, really fast. Or um, you, when you do the, the chest pass throw, you can throw a med ball 30, 40 feet. How does this relate to golf? So what I found was some cool statistics to kind of show you how the nervous system transfers or, or how it correlates from training your nervous system with a medicine ball to the swing so we talked about acceleration acceleration and technique um this these statistics here primarily cover acceleration so um what i found was the angular velocities during a downswing so this is actually a really really cool graph to kind of um show you exactly how medicine ball training can transfer over to this so if you look at the at the very bottom of the graph okay the furthest left on the x axis that's going to be right at the beginning of your downswing that's right at 0% of your downswing and if you look at the angular velocities they they're pretty 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 low like almost how they would be if you were to start a medicine ball throw like a like a lateral scoop toss you have that ball loaded back in your hip and it's at about 0 degrees and as far as the speed goes it's not moving exactly but as you progress in the downswing, your speed picks up and up and up and up. 
It's accelerating exactly the same as what we do with the medicine ball throw. Think about how fast that medicine ball is when it's striking the wall versus how fast it is when it's loaded back on your hip to start the movement. And keep all of this in mind, this graph right here, this is happening from zero to 100% of the downswing. This is happening anywhere from a quarter to a half second long because that's about the average time of a, of a downswing for, for amateur golfers. Okay. So that's happening really, really fast. So that's why the key component to medicine ball training and probably the key component to like what you should take away from this today is going to be fast. It has to be happening faster and faster. So like I talked about, you, you just fed your nervous system a big cup of coffee and you told it, here, chug this as fast as possible. That's kind of what this slide is going to talk about a little bit more. So your nervous system ultimately controls the velocity of the movement. The strength is going to be gained from the movements that we're doing at the beginning of the workout. Your squat, your bench, your deadlift, and the other single arm, dumbbell bench, renegade rows, other movements like that. But how you train power is by ultimately training your nervous system. And what you want to do is, is you basically want to put your nervous system on overdrive. Like I mentioned, think about your nervous system is the messengers. They're shooting messages down from your brainstem and saying, here, muscles, you have to move faster. This group of muscles, fire here, fire here, fire now at this time here. And it's just a big group of messengers being sent down from your nervous system. What we're trying to do with medicine balls is to increase the amount of messengers that are being sent and increase the rate or the speed in which they're being sent. So um, how you do this is you train things fast. So thinking about sprinting, and this, this goes for everybody now, not just, not just the adults that we train, um, not just anybody who's online that we train. This can go for juniors as well. Um, thinking about the different movements that we do, all the box jumps, all the sprints, all the overspeed training, all the medicine balls, different stuff like that. It's all trying to train your nervous system, try and get to fire faster and more frequently to increase that, that, that power output. So we talked about the acceleration. So that's how we gain acceleration. Hey, that's, how, that's how the acceleration component kind of comes into place with medicine ball training. Now let's talk about the technique. So um, medicine ball training allows athletes to train the power production among different directions. So we know we can now train our central nervous system to fire fast. Now we want to try and train it to fire fast in different patterning or different different sequences and how we do that is we primarily break it up into three different um three different sequences or into um three different directions so you have your vertical hey you're creating vertical force so an example of this would be like a wall ball exercise hey um you're trying to get that medicine ball to explode and get your body to propel it as up as vertical as fast as possible. Okay? The next one's gonna be horizontal. So now we're working side to side. So these would be this would be examples of like a lateral scoop toss. You're trying to get that medicine ball, you're trying to get your body to create that power in a lateral, in a lateral direction as fast as possible. And then the last one's gonna be rotational. And that's where um the that's a that's a lot more specific to golf is that rotational component of a, of a med ball throw. And here you're thinking of like um your uh, your squared scoop toss or a transverse slam rotating side to side. I'm going to show you a little bit more of some examples on the next slide here. So here are some examples of different medicine ball exercise that we do in-house with both the juniors, the adults, and that we also train online, um, expressing the vertical, horizontal, and rotational component uh, of that power production. So like I mentioned, the wall ball, that, that's where she's displaying that in the vertical power. So what you're doing is you're getting your body to create that ground force and extend in that vertical force vector. The second one is going to be that horizontal component. And then that's where obviously you're using your ground force. Once again, everything starts at the ground and you're creating that, that power production working side to side or working lateral and, and you're using the appropriate, appropriate muscle groups to do that as well. And that's what they kind of show um, in the body diagrams here. And then the last one is the rotational. So she's, she's showing you a transverse slam. Okay? And what that transverse slam is doing here is that's working that rotation. So that's connecting your hips and shoulders as they rotate from one side to the next. And we'll talk a little bit more about these in specific on the next slide. So how exactly do those transfer over to the golf swing? So what I did was I broke down a, a downswing to kind of show you exactly where these force vectors are coming into play 
um, in, in a, in a pre-standard downswing. So the first one you have to rotate, you have to rotate back to get that club, um, into that, that you thinking about the graph that I showed you at the beginning, like, like five slides ago, you have to rotate that club back. So that way you're at that zero. Hey, you, that's that club stops. You're at zero for your speed and you're at zero for your percent of the downswing right on the far left of this slide here. Hey, now, as you're striking the ball, hey, you're, you're taking your rotational force to get the club back. And also you have to rotate it forward, but then you're striking the ball with a ton of vertical force. So vertical force is actually the primary force involved in the golf swing and producing the power to, to, to swing the club and hit the ball. But that vertical force then shifts into lateral as the ball is, is, um, as you strike the ball and then to finish and to follow through, you have to rotate once again. So thinking about this previous slide here or the, the back side or the slide that we just talked about, Hey, you have your three, um, your three directions in which you train power, a vertical, horizontal, and rotational. So now how does that transfer over to golf swing? This is it right here. This is how you do it right here. And, in in this slide here to help best explain, hey, now what you're doing, hey, putting it all together, and we're going to do that in the next couple slides here, but putting it all together is you're looking at this slide here, and then you're also thinking about the central nervous system development that we talked about like three, four slides ago, and you're putting it all together, and how can you get your central nervous system to go on overdrive during this sequencing here to ultimately increase your club head speed and put on 10 mile or 10, 10 yards on, on, on your drive. Neuromuscular adaptation, I told you <laughs> way back at the beginning, that's going to kind of be a key point to this presentation. And here it is once again, coming back. Um, you're coordinating the central nervous system. This is what I just ended the last slide on. What you're doing is you're getting that central nervous system to go on to overdrive and training everything as fast as possible. And then what that's doing is it's maximizing the efficiency and the coordination with the muscular system to take your strength and produce that power. Um, how, so how do you drive the ball further? Hey, you have to generate more power. Hey, well, how exactly do you generate more power? Like we talked way like on slide number three, it's force times velocity is power. Hey, how do you create that force? You build the strength in the weight room. And then how do you create the, the, the velocity? How do you create the speed of movement? That's your nervous system efficiency, or that's your, that's your overspeed. That's your fast, um, your fast exercises that you're training then what ultimately drives the ball further? That neuromuscular adaptation, being able to connect the two, your strength and your nervous system efficiency. So just to kind of wrap things up here, I know I moved a little bit quick. Um, hopefully, if you need to, press pause at any time during this, this presentation. However, um, medicine ball training serves as a great source to, grain yard, to gain yards off the tee. So we do it um, for multiple reasons. It trains the appropriate energy system. And it's what we kind of start off this presentation with. It's, it's training that, that short, quick burst energy that takes a longer amount of time to recover, that takes about that two to three minute time to recover. Okay? It develops an efficient neuromuscular adaptation. So it takes the strength that we're gaining from our squat exercise, our bench exercise, or our deadlift exercises, and we're transferring that over into power with, with developing that nervous system, uh, that central nervous system overdrive and efficiency. Which ultimately, what's that, what that's doing is it's, it's coordinating or it's training that technique and acceleration that we talked about uh, back at the beginning of the presentation. And then lastly, it trains movements among different directions related to the golf swing. So um, that's exactly what we just talked about with my, uh, with my like, two slides ago when we talked about the golf swing and what, what types of forces are being created at what timing um, of the downswing. So takeaways or guidelines when you shut this off or when you uh, finally um, finish this presentation, what do I want you to actually be thinking about after you, you've, you've listened to um, all of this is I want you to be thinking about one, never perform a single set that lasts longer than 12 seconds. So like we talked about, that's your energy system development. Okay. Um, if you're doing medicine ball throws for like 20 or 30 reps at a time and it's taking you like an entire minute to do a set that is no longer training uh, the appropriate energy system. You're no longer training that creatine phosphate system. You're now training something that's that's a lot. Hey, you're training more of your your endurance at that point. 
right? Two is perform movements that translate to the golf swing. And to be quite honest, all three of those directions of force that we talked about, rotation, vertical, and horizontal, they transfer over to golf swing. Now, like I mentioned, vertical transfers just a little bit more because vertical force is your primary force vector during the swing. However, hey, we're also training all three. We're not neglecting the other two, right? And then the next one is choose a lightweight that's heavy enough to overload the system, hey, but yet, or choose a weight which is heavy enough to overload the system, yet light enough to keep the velocity up. Now, think back to your, your, um, your force and velocity curve. So if you choose a heavyweight, if you're throwing like a 20-pound medicine ball and that ball is just barely getting out of your hands with a low, low, low speed, then once again, you're not training power anymore. At that point, you're training strength. So you want to try and make this as specific as possible. And then number four, perform the movement as fast and explosive as possible. You will never de- fully develop your nervous system if you don't do any type of any type of overspeed training with a medicine ball, with different jump mechanics, with speed sticks, or um, with different sprint or agility uh, drills as well. None of that, you're, you're never going to become a powerful athlete if you don't train any of that. And then the last one is at a minimum rest for at least two minutes between sets. So if you don't take the appropriate amount of time during rest, your short term, your creatine phosphate energy system is no longer than being recovered and it's moving on to your aerobic system. And once again, you just took uh, what was supposed to be a power drill or a power exercise and turned it into conditioning once again. So like I said, if there's if there's anything that I want you to take from this this presentation, honestly, you could have skipped everything. That was what it was. was it, it was a big science lesson for me trying to get, give you a good idea of, of a visual of everything. And um, basically skip right onto this slide here, take a screenshot of it, and, and take this. And next time you go to throw a medicine ball against a wall or next time you go to um, do a transverse slam, be thinking, okay, um, how much time is this taking me? How much rest am I taking between? Am I expressing as much force and as much velocity as I possibly can? And then lastly, what I want to leave you all with is any comments or questions. So I, I, I really, really, really enjoy getting to talk with all the members, all the junior members, all the adults, anybody online, uh, online members when I get to talk to you on our one-on-one phone calls. I really enjoy answering questions that you, that you have and getting to just strike up conversations. So if, if you have anything from this presentation that, that you find just a little bit questionable or um, that, that you'd like to strike up a conversation with me about, please, please, please feel free to shoot me an email. Um, hopefully um, I have the appropriate answer for you. If not, we can definitely strike up some conversation and um, throw some ideas around to one another and, and in um, some from our conversations. Thank you for joining really enjoyed the video. I, I um, highly encourage you to, to like and share this with, with as many people as, as you can as um, to educate them and, and uh, get them to understand why medicine ball training is so important. And uh, yeah, if you do have any questions, feel please feel free to shoot me an email.